Hey, how's it going? What's up? Welcome. So what I'm about to show you may be the coolest thing I've ever done. My most important work. And that's saying a lot because I'm pretty impressive. <laughs> Screwdriver drop. This may change the way we use structural equation models and other latent variable models. Maybe. Or maybe not. Who knows? So I'm going to deviate from my normal presentation mode, and I'm going to give a presentation to you that I gave at a conference about a year ago. And I hope you have some background in structural equation modeling. If not, that's okay. Um, I'm just not going to explain what it is in this video. So today I'm going to talk about visualizing latent variable models with Flex Plavon. So what is Flex Plavon? Kind of a funny name, isn't it? Well, Flex Plavon is an amalgamation of Flexplot and Lavon. Who'd have thought? Well, what is Flexplot? If you've followed my channel for some time, you know exactly what Flexplot is. But for those of you who don't, Flexplot is a, another amalgamation of the words flexible and plotting. So the idea behind Flexplot is that the user can specify a model and then Flexplot visualizes that model automatically. And one of the core features of Flexplot is its emphasis on raw data. So let me give you some examples. For example, a t-test. Here's one example where I have some R code that is modeling a t-test using the Avengers dataset available in the Flexplot package. And if we were to visualize that, we would see what's called a bee swarm plot that shows uh, Basically, a modified scatter plot showing the relationship between north and south battlefields and PTSD. And if we were to look at an ANOVA, we might use code that looks like this to fit our model. So we might use the linear model function in R to fit an ANOVA. And then we could again use the visualize function in Flexplot to visualize the statistical model. And we would see something that looks like this, where we have three different groups on the x-axis and their scores on the y-axis. And then we have a red line indicating the means of each of the groups. Or maybe we're doing a regression where we are predicting, in this case, weight loss from motivation. And if we were to run this R code, we would use, again, the visualize function. And it shows us a scatter plot with a regression line. Or maybe we're doing mixed models where we are using the lemur4 package. And we might use R code that looks like this, where we are fitting the relationship between math achievement and socioeconomic status, as well as minority status, being clustered on schools. And if we were to visualize that in Flexplot, we might see something that looks like this. So once again, across all these cases, Flexplot is designed to take a statistical model and make it easy to visualize it. What about Lavon? What is Lavon? Lavon itself is an amalgamation of words. My golly goodness, we have so many amalgamations going on here. So Lavon is short for latent variable analysis. So the idea behind Lavon is we can use it to fit models that have latent variables or unobserved variables. So what we do is we use the observed variables to posit what the latent variables might look like. And it is one R package that a lot of people use to fit structural equation models. In the R code down below, we see a fitted structural equation model and some R code we might use. And then that diagram to my, that side, <laughs> whatever side that is, that shows you a visual representation of what the model looks like. So to recap, Flexplot plus Lavon equals Flexplavon. Or we would say, we are combining easy plots with latent variable models. That's what Flexplavon is. Or in other words, Flexplavon is software designed to make it easy to visualize latent variable models, or LVMs as I will call them. But when you are trying to visualize latent variable models, there is one massive, huge, ginormous problem. How do you visualize latent variables? They're freaking invisible. By definition, they are unobserved. How do you visualize something that is unobserved? And like I said earlier, one of the core characteristics of Flexplot is it wants to visualize raw data, the raw data points. But a lot of people, when they are using latent variable models, they are not using the raw data. They are using the covariances to fit their model. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's okay. Eventually, someday, I will do a course series on latent variable models. So throughout this, I'm going to show you an example to highlight some of the features of Flexplavon. And this right here, I'm gonna call the Jedi dataset. And by the way, if you read the paper, I actually use this exact dataset 
in a scientific publication. Is that not the coolest thing ever? So in this model, we have two latent variables, Force and Jedi. And unbeknownst to us, the correct model looks like this. So the Force variable causes the variable's fitness, Saber and midichlorian, as well as partially causing history. And then the other latent variable, Jedi, causes one scores on the Jedi Padawan final examinations that has three exams. I'm totally making this up, by the way. And so if we were to fit this model and analyze it, what would we do? Traditionally, what we would do is we would look at what we call fit statistics. And so we might have our code that looks like this on the left and it gives us results like you see on the right. And the traditional way, again, is that we look at all those fit indices like the TLI and the CFI and the AIC and BIC and RMSEA and all those things. And we use those metrics. And traditionally, this isn't the best way of doing it, but a lot of people have traditionally used certain benchmarks that if your RMSEA is less than 0.05, then it's a good model. People like me, statisticians, have known for a long time that these benchmarks are actually ridiculous. And there have been some updated guidelines, and I can leave a link in the description to some of the updated guidelines. But still, using numbers alone to evaluate a model is a horrible, horrible, horrible idea. And the reason why it's a horrible idea is you can get identical fit indices from two completely different models. One of which actually fits the data quite well, and one of which is a horrible model. And yet you get the same fit indices. That happens all the time. So unless we visualize these models and visualize the raw data, we are going into model evaluation completely blind. So how do we visualize this? That's where FlexPlavon comes in. And the basic idea, or at least one of the basic ideas, is that we're going to plot the observed variables against the other observed variables. And then what we're going to do is we're going to overlay a line that illustrates the fit of the model. So in that way, it's not all that different from regression models or t-tests or ANOVAs. So let me give you an example. So below is some R code for the Jedi data set and on the right are the plots that it will produce. And we call these plots trace plots. Why are they called trace plots? Because it shows a line that represents the trace left by the latent variable model. And so the red line is the trace left by the latent variable model and the blue line is the regression fit of the model and you would hope that the red line and the blue line are almost identical. And in a lot of these cases, they are. Except for maybe the relationship between lightsaber and midichlorian. And by the way, if you're sophisticated enough to know what I'm talking about and wonder where that line comes from, this just comes from the implied variance covariance matrix. But we could go one step further than this. We can use what are called disturbance dependence plots. If you are familiar with standard regression diagnostics, and if not, I can leave a link in the video, there is something called a residual dependence plot that basically plots the relationship between your predictor variable and your outcome after subtracting out the effect of the model. And the idea is if we subtract out the effect of the model, there should be nothing remaining left in the model. So we should see a random scattering of data points. What we are going to do is we're going to take that pairwise relationship and subtract the fit that is implied by the model. And then we're going to plot the residuals now. And if our latent variable model has subtracted any relationship between our two observed variables, what we should see is nothing. Let's look at an example. My head is bouncing all over the place, isn't it? Kind of like whack-a-mole. So here we have some more R code that looks not all that different from the last plot, but now we are producing in the upper diagonals so, oh, can you see my mouse? Yeah. So these plots right here show us the trail plots, which is what we saw in the last slide. But down here are the disturbance dependence plots. And what we are looking for is we are looking for a flat line representing the fact that we extracted all signal between our two variables. But if we look at this plot right here, we see that even after we subtract out the fit of the model, there's still a little bit of slope left. So that tells us that there is some relationship between lightsaber and midichlorian that we have not successfully extracted. And by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, the diagonals show the histogram of these residuals. Although we call them disturbances or single case residuals, whatever you want to call them, they are the residuals of the model. 
And so in this example, I have just visualized four variables at a time, but you're not limited to four. You can visualize as many as you want, although it might take a while to plot all those plots, but you can do it. And so here is the relationship between all the variables in the model. And what I'm seeing is right here, we have a big problem. Oh, it's hard to see what that says. Oh, that is exam one and force history. So this tells us that after we subtract out the fit of the latent variable model, there is a giant relationship that we have failed to capture. Now, if we were to look at the fit indices and we we're look at the fit statistics, we would say, yay, we've got a good model. Publish that sucker, baby. Woo! But no, because this tells us that we have something that is missing. And that would have been much more difficult to detect without these visuals. But that is not enough because sometimes misfit doesn't show up in the correlations, but in the latent variables. Or in other words, sometime you can have a model that reproduces the correlations very, very well, but there's still a massive problem in the model. And if you wanna see an example of that, I'm gonna link the paper in the description. So in that situation, my head is too big. Metaphorically and otherwise. Oh well. Moving on, I guess. <laughs> uh, so the label that is covered by my fat head is Saber. So down at the bottom there, it shows the R code that I used to produce this plot. And what is this showing us? On the X axis is the observed variable. So fitness, force history, midichlorian, and Saber. And on the Y axis is the estimated latent variable. And so these plots are very useful for diagnosing misfit in the latent variables. And so what is this telling us here? This is telling us, for example, in the first plot right here, the blue line again represents the observed relationship and the red line represents the implied relationship. So this tells us that according to the implied model, there is a much stronger relationship than what we actually observe. So we are overestimating the relationship between the fitness observed variable and our latent variable score. And that second plot is kind of illuminating. It basically tells us that the force latent variable is almost identical to the force history variable. So that might be informative. And then also across the other two plots, we see that we are consistently grossly overestimating the relationship between our observed variables and our force score. So these might suggest some ways that we can change our model. Now, eventually, I don't know when, but sometime I'm going to get a little more into the weeds and show you how to identify specific types of misspecification from plots. In this video, I'm just here to introduce the tools and the basic idea. Whack-a-mole! So not only can we visualize the latent variables and the observed variables, but we could also visualize what we call the structural plot or the relationship between the two latent variables or three latent variables, depending on how many latent variables we have. And notice here that we have dots that look like a regular scatter plot, but we also have crosshairs and these are called crosshair plots. So why, when I developed this, did I choose to represent scores as a crosshair? Well, remember, we are dealing with latent variables or unobserved variables. So I wanted to explicitly show that these are estimated scores, not real scores. And the best way that I could think of to show that is with crosshairs. These plots are great if you know that you have a good model. Otherwise, this is just misleading. So in this case, we know that there are some problems with the model. And so we probably shouldn't even be looking at these to identify the relationship between force score and Jedi score. We need to fix the model before we can do that. So one of the other critical and cool features of FlexPlavon is the ability to compare two different models. Here I am fitting the new model and for your reference, here is the model that I'm fitting, which is the correct model or the model that I used to generate the data set. And that model is this same model that I showed you earlier, which is the model that generated the data. If I do that and plug both models into the visualize function in FlexPlavon, we might see something that looks like this. And now we have two lines. One is the red model, which was the original model we fit. And then the greenish blue line, which is the correct model that we specified. And notice that the new model, not surprisingly, fits the data a lot better. If we look at the disturbance dependence plots in the lower diagonal, we see that the bluish greenish line is almost always perfectly flat. And by the way, there's a black solid line to show you what 
a flat line looks like. And so again, not surprisingly, because this is the model that generated the data, once we fit the model, it seems to fit pretty well. And we could also do the same sorts of visuals on the other plots, and they would look good too. So I know you are just dying to know, how do I get Flex Plavon on my machine? Well, for a low cost of absolutely nothing, you can download it from GitHub. And to do that, uh, currently it is not in ours repository, so you have to do some legwork to get it. So you gotta install the DevTools package, and then from the DevTools package, you can install the Flex Plavon package. And if you want to read more about it, you can see the paper by myself and my colleague, Steven Brunwasser and Ed Merkel, that is now, as of yesterday, in press and psychological methods, but you could also see the preprint online at the URL listed on this page, but I'll also link it in the description. So that right there is a very, very, very brief introduction to Flex Plavon, and we haven't even tapped its awesomeness entirely and how informative it is. But if you wanna hear more about Flex Plavon, and if you wanna see how amazing it is and what tools are available, please let me know by leaving a comment below. With that, I'll see you next time. Peace out.